Hello everyone and welcome. This is going to be video series where I'm going to show you how to build lab from the scratch. The platform which is going to provide emulation of real world is GNS3. And if you are unsure how to get it running, check my GNS3 installation guide. You will also find there all images used in this lab as well as appliances. The link will be in the description. The only difference between my lab and your build might be VirtualBox machines, but it does not really matter. You can use whatever is available to you. Placing devices on workbench is simple as drag and drop, and I have speeded up this process because in next slide I would encourage you to pause the video and replicate connections. Just trust me, attaching devices to the same ports as me will make it so much easier to follow for you. Our journey is going to start in this cloud, which will be our ISP emulation, or your LAN. You need to select interface which is connected. In my case, it is Ethernet. In your case, name may differ, but concept stays same. I will be connecting mine to Gigabit Ethernet 2.0. Also, I would not recommend to use Wi-Fi interface, because they are not working well. However, it is possible to lie to GNS3 with VMware Virtual NAT interface, but I will save that one for later. After solving how to connect to the cloud, you can press start on your lab. These two PCs are my VirtualBox VMs for complete real-world experience and as you can see, they are booting in the background. These redundant links will become aggregated links using LACP. They will be also configured as a trunk to carry out VLAN information. So, let's configure them on Cisco switch first. Actually, before we do that, let's check what is the default config saying and apply some tweaking to it, so our configuring experience is more pleasant. First thing which may annoy you is how console messages interrupting typing commands. Let me show you what I mean. When I write exit now, console message will shortly appear, but what happens when I start typing again? Hmm, got interrupted by iOS. Switch configuration mode by typing conf t and let's go quickly fix that. Follow up with line console 0 and type in command exec time out 00, which will prevent switch from kicking us out of console in case of short inactivity. I will also apply no login because I don't want type passwords every time I open console connection in lab environment. In the real world, I would not recommend to apply these commands. Privilege level 15 means that we will get privilege prompt without need of typing enable. And finally command which we came for, logging synchronous for no longer typing interruptions. See, working out well. Now let's remove banners. To disable banner, simply place no in front, which will negate banner config. And not just that, placing no in front of any command in iOS is a way of reverting back changes. We can verify what we have done so far with the do show run command. For now it is looking good, so now let's go configure our aggregate links. I will move window a bit so we have better overview and type in interface range gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 dash 1. And now we are going to bundle two interfaces together using command channel group 1 mode active. Which also means use LACP and actively negotiate on the aggregate link. Our next bundle is going to be gigabit interface 0 slash 2 and 0 slash 3. And the configuration will be same with the exception using channel group 2.
From now, I am going to use directly bundled interface configuration mode, interface port channel. And because this is our intended trunk port, I will apply trunk configuration. Same goes for the port channel too as well. With these commands, I am going to tell this bundle use .1q tagging and you are a trunk. And repeat same on port channel 2. To create a reachable interface on VLAN 10, simply type in interface VLAN 10 and assign IP address. This interface will stay down until at least one interface on Cisco switch is associated with VLAN 10. We can quickly verify interfaces which we configured with command do show IP interface brief. Now let me show you how to associate port with the VLAN 10. Because one of our virtual machine is connected to the interface Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 1, I am going to start there. And the commands will be switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 10. With that automatically VLAN 10 has been created along with it. Now let me show you how to name it and quickly check the configuration of the VLAN with the command do show VLAN. Rest of the interfaces can be added in similar fashion to the VLAN 10 or to the different VLAN, but for now this is enough. And as you can see our VLAN 10 interface is coming up because at least one interface is assigned to VLAN 10. Ok, we can save config as our most basic configuration for connectivity is done. Our next step is at FortiGate, so let's open CLI there. If you are logging first time, you will be forced to change password. Pick something which you will remember. I have already done that here, but I will show you on FortiGate 1. Start with the config system interface. And let's quickly check what is configured there with the command show. Ok, nothing yet is configured, so I am going to start with the aggregate interface configuration right away. Simply type in edit and interface name will be aggregate. Currently no VDOM configuration is applied, so this is just retyping what would be chosen as default. Rest of the commands are self-explanatory, so follow me. Members will be port 9 and port 10 on both 40 gates. Next I am going to add VLAN 10 interface with the command edit VLAN 10. We will follow addressing scheme which was picked when we configured VLAN interface on Cisco switch. Next you should allow different types of access for configuration and reachability. With the command set interface aggregate, we will tell FortiGate you will be responding on aggregated link as sub interface. And finally set VLAN ID, which will tell FortiGate you are part of VLAN 10. To verify reachability, we simply going to ping Cisco switch and the IP address is which we configured on VLAN interface 10. 
we are getting there without issues and when I take a look on the switch I can see that our aggregated link on Cisco site came up as well. Now let's establish connection on FortiGate 1. As previously mentioned, this will be first login and you will be asked for password change. Here configuration will be almost identical with the exception of IP address assigned to interface VLAN 10, which in this case will be dot .3. I will also add CLI commands applied in the description so there is no confusion. success while you're gonna wake up and work hard at it nothing is impossible you should get to the point where anyone else would quit and you're not gonna stop there no what are you waiting for do it just do it yes you can just do it If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. For insurance, don't forget to verify connectivity with the ping. Checking up Cisco site, I can see that interface port channel is up and running and that's good. For now, establishing connectivity from client to our configured devices is possible with assigning static IP address from addressing space of VLAN 10. And of course, let's check it out with the ping. And both FortiGates are sending ICMP replies, so let's check if GUI is reachable as well. Okay, as you can see, we are getting successfully there, and now you can upload your license file on both FortiGates, Trial or Full, whatever you have access to. However, I can tell you in advance that activation is not going to finish, simply because we haven't configured one connectivity yet. And that is exactly what we are going to do in next video. Take care, see you next time.